G'day guys. Um, before I explain how active freewheeling works, I just want to demonstrate how circuit inductance affects current flow. Now, over here we have a basic circuit. And as our current flows through our circuit, we have a magnetic field which is formed, or a magnetic field which rises around the conductor. Now, a magnetic field cannot rise instantly and it cannot collapse instantly. And also, a magnetic field cannot exist without current flow and a magnetic field is also proportional to the amount of current flowing. Now, if we were to cut this circuit at this point in there, thinking that we have seized the current flow, well, what happens to the magnetic field? It cannot change instantly. What happens is the current needs to continue flowing until the magnetic field completely collapses and at this point here, at the point at which we cut the circuit, our voltage rises and it forms a spark and the spark jumps the gap until the magnetic field has completely collapsed. Now that's because, that's because current flow cannot change instantly due to the magnetic field it creates around the flowing current. Now how can we how can we get rid of this spark? We don't want this spark. How can we get rid of that? Well what we do is we can put a diode in our circuit like this. Now as current is flowing through our circuit, alright, if we cut the circuit at that point there The, the current which is flowing ends up forward biasing the diode and it flows back through the diode until the magnetic field completely collapses. Now the reason why it takes time for a magnetic field to collapse is because a magnetic field contains energy. It stores energy in, in the magnetic field. It's, it's basically an inductor and, and, and that's what it is. So. So we have we have our diode here and the current at, when we when we turn our circuit off as soon as we go from high to low we turn our circuit off uh, the the current then flows through this diode now diodes have losses diodes have 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 volts of drop when current flows through so as soon as we turn this circuit off we're going to get a tiny bit of current flowing through the diode and it generates a tiny bit of heat in our diode. Now you're probably saying how does this affect our speed controllers? What, what does this have to do with brushless speed controllers and, and, and active freewheeling? Well let me show you, I'll demonstrate that now. So over here we have a, a typical uh, speed controller. Now it contains of six MOSFETs, it contains six, one, two, three, four, five, six, two FETs, an upper FET and a lower FET on each bridge. Now at any given time we have current flowing through one a, a, a single phase of the motor. So we in, in this case here we have this MOSFET here and this MOSFET here which is which are conducting. So we have current flowing down our bus, down, uh, through our bus into our MOSFET, through the motor phase and back through the lower MOSFET on the other side. Now at partial load, this is what a f this is what full this is what a full speed voltage phase voltage looks like. It's not it's, it isn't chopped up with the PWM. And this is partial load, it's chopped up with PWM. As you can see, there's PWM superimposed onto the commutation signal. Now, see over here how it turns on and off, on and off at really high frequency? So, we have current flowing through our circuit like this. And then all of a sudden, this fit here turns off. It turns off because it wants to... It, it wants to superimpose the PWM to give us our partial current flow. Now, it, as soon as this MOSFET turns off, 
so this this fit he stops conducting what happens is there's no return path there's no return path for the for, see our current comes down this way comes down this way flows through this fit here through the motor and comes down through the lower fit but remember this this is an inductor and it's got all this energy stored in the winding it's got all this energy stored in the front. so this turns off all right and the current needs to this magnetic field needs to collapse so it needs to it needs to flow it needs to form a loop to flow so instead of coming down this way what happens is it goes around this way and it forms its closed loop now as it comes around this way the body diode on this lower MOSFET here begins to conduct so every time every time our PWM turns off when it turns off or when this MOSFET here turns off this diode here go, goes into forward bias and begins to conduct current so we have power flowing current flowing th down through this way then this turns off then our current just goes that way then power comes down again this way then it turns off and it goes around that way now this is the body diode in the MOSFET that's 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 the body diode in, in, in the MOSFET now because it's a diode we're gonna have losses you know we're gonna have 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 volts a drop in that diode and if we have 50 amps coming through and this is conducting for 50 percent of the time it's seeing an average current of 25 amp times 0 0.5 volts that's nearly 12.5 watts of heat just in this just in this uh, diode alone here now how can we get rid of this heat how, 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 how do we get rid of the losses in this diode How do we get rid of the losses in that diode? Well, what we can do is, if we look at this circuit over here, it's the same circuit, same circuit. We have our current flow through the motor, through the circuit down this way. Then as soon as this FET here turns off, this FET here turns on. And instead of current flowing through the diode, the current will begin to flow through the FET. So our freewheeling current, see, this is called a freewheeling current. It forms a loop. It forms a wheel. So it's our freewheeling current. As soon as that turns off, we still have our freewheeling current. We still have our current flowing until the energy completely depletes. Now, instead of flowing through this diode, it flows through this FET. Now, the FETs have much less voltage drop as opposed to diodes. So when we turn this FET off, when we turn this fed off at this point here what we can do is turn that fed on over here and that allows our our motor current to continue flowing and because our fed has turned on it's shorted it's basically shorted out the diode and we don't see our, our 0 0.5 volt dropped anymore we only see our fed losses which are which are minimal compared to compared to our diode losses so at partial load, when our when our PWM is switching, instead of allowing our freewheeling current to flow through the diode, they flow through the lower FET, which runs much more efficiently compared compared to this diode. Now, that extra that extra energy which we're saving because of the losses that just flows back into the motor and it it, it just makes the it just gives you a tiny bit more energy it, it, it power in your motor so as we can see because current as we saw from this circuit over here because current flow cannot change instantly as soon as that turns off our existing current needs to go somewhere it needs to flow somewhere so instead of flowing instead of flowing through this diode over here instead of flowing forming its loop that way it forms its loop through the FET and and it runs much cooler 
and that's basically what active freewheeling is so it instead of using the the FET body diodes to conduct the freewheeling currents we're using the FETs themselves to conduct the freewheeling currents and the speed controller runs much cooler at partial load and that's basically how active freewheeling works thanks